Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. How are you today? This is Patty Bennett. I am excited. I'm excited for several reasons, but maybe the main reason is because I'm going to color today and I love to color. <laughs> so I just wanted to say hello and welcome if you are joining me live. I so appreciate that you have found me. And while we are waiting for the people on our Facebook Live to join in, I am just going to keep coloring because uh, I know it's kind of boring just to sit and look at a blank screen. So while you're joining, tell me hello. I love to see that you're here. If So if you're joining live, then today is Friday, September 3rd on Facebook. And we are going to be talking about this really cute Feels Like Home stamp set and coloring with Stampin' Blends. So while you're joining, hello, good morning. Hi, Heather, Susan, Stella, Peggy, Karen, Mary, Elaine, Patricia. I missed a few at the beginning. Marcy, Ginny. Hi, everyone. Hi, Rochelle. Thanks for joining me. I'm just going to be just adding a little bit of color to my... Um, project right here and then then we'll talk more about what how I colored it and we're going to actually make one of these red door cards today and I'm going to tell you the story of the red door I see that Marcy is on here and she heard the story the other day but not all of you have heard the story <laughs> hi Elaine Shan Libby Lisa Linda Hey, everybody. So glad that you're here. Thanks for joining me. I think we're at the top of the hour, so I'm going to officially open the video and welcome everyone. This is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today we are going to be coloring this cute red door card. And today, this is a live video, by the way. If you see that live, there it is up here, red live button, then you found it live on Facebook. But you, chances are you're probably watching a replay later if you don't see that. So it could be on my blog, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page. Um, anyway, I welcome wherever you're watching from and however you're watching. I'm so glad that you're here. I share weekly crafting videos on Fridays and it's at 11 a.m. Pacific time. It's you know, could be different where you are. You might be in a different time zone, but we are going to be coloring. I love to color with stamp and blend markers. I don't know if you've seen on my YouTube channel, I have a playlist of about, I don't know, 12 or 13 stamp and blend video tutorials. So I'm going to link to that below the video on YouTube when we're done. If you're watching on Facebook, the link will be above. So if you want to see more about how I color, how I swatch my colors, I actually have those right here. Excuse my reach. I should have had those out. When you've watched my Stampin' Blends videos, you've probably noticed that I usually do this and I swatch the colors first because I like to see how they look different and you might, especially when you get into like these browns and grays, you kind of look at the markers and you're like, oh my gosh, or like right here, the purples and you're thinking, uh oh, what, you know, how does that look different? So I, I love to swatch these. It really helps me when I'm working on my projects. Oh, okay. Libby says, can't wait to hear the story of the red door. <laughs> yeah, I will share that with you in just a minute. This stamp set, if you're not familiar, you might be thinking, wait, wait, where did she get that cute door? It's in this home, in this home, <laughs> it's in this set called Feels Like Home. And it's actually reminding me here to tell you that it's in the celebration catalog. So if you're watching live at, or in September, you still have time to get this. It's a free stamp set with a $50 Stampin' Up! order. So um, yeah, it's it's cute. And I could just see the possibilities. I was looking at this when we got the brochure. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great set to color. And it's true. 
By the way, celebration is half done already. Can you believe that? We had an extra celebration this year for August and September, and now it's half done. Yeah. So if you're watching after September, this set is no longer available, but you can apply these coloring techniques to other outline images. And what I mean by an outline image is when you stamp it, you're going to get just this outline. And it reminds me of a coloring book, right? When, I don't know if you're in my age range, but I loved that box of Crayolas with the 16, I mean, 30, no, 64, was it 64 colors? That was the big one that had the little pencil sharpener uh, in the end that you could sharpen your crayons. Yeah. So that's what I mean by it. Like a open coloring book type of image because you color it in. And I was just going to show you because I want to mount this. This is actually not mounted, but I want to show you something. When I colored these, I wasn't sure, you know, what I was going to mount it on, how I was going to finish off the card. So I used, you can see here, the stitched rectangle die to cut out my larger quarter sheet. And then on this one, I really wanted this red to pop. And so I mounted it on some Poppy Parade cardstock, just a little peak of color. And then this background is actually this pattern. I think this is a travertine stone, and it's in the uh, In Good Taste Stampin' Up designer paper pack. That's a huge pack with I think it's got 24 patterns of all different kind of textiles and stones and wood and um, knit patterns and all different things. So that's the background of it. And I just really wanted to keep it sort of clean and simple so that this red door just popped. I don't know. What do you think? Do you uh, drop me a comment if you think if you agree like this just totally pops. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Marcy, Juanita. Thank you for your sweet comments. Hi, Fran. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you like it. So what I wanted to show you on this one, because it's not mounted yet, is that I mounted that piece of travertine stone paper onto just a thick Whisper White top fold, but I love, love, love these foam sheets. Excuse my reach. This is what the package looks like. It's a Stampin' Up! product called Foam Adhesive Sheets, and there are, I believe, six large pieces in there, and I have just used some older scissors to cut it down because I don't like to get anything adhesive onto my nice paper snips. The reason I like to do this and add it to something large like this, two reasons, actually. So we're just going to peel off the release paper and place it on the back. So two reasons. This is way faster than using a whole bunch of Stampin' Dimensionals. There is nothing wrong with using a whole bunch of Stampin' Dimensionals. You are like more than welcome to do that. But it's faster and it ensures that you're not going to have like a little part that's kind of saggy. You know, if you put them like I would have put maybe six around the outside and two in the middle, but then you could have still pressed into those other spots. And I just prefer that this is like a really sturdy, stable, popped up focal point. So that's why I use them. And, you know, it's absolutely an option. It's not a must. You can do what you like. But so now we have two finished cards. <laughs> we have the red door and we have the blue door. And you'll notice one thing I did on here that I'm going to do as I color this red door image for you. This stamp, when you stamp it, the imagery for that stone background ends, like right here. Do you see that? And then it ends somewhere behind the tree. But do you see the difference of what I did? I carried out the stone a little bit further because I just wanted that wall to look a little more filled in. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And I did use two different colors. So on this one on the red door is light gray granite for the stone. And the one on the blue door was, I believe, light crumb cake. And you could do this any color. You could do it uh, like Cajun craze and make it look more like brick. 
or you could do something that looked almost more like wood. You can leave it white. You can do whatever. Just kind of showing you some of the tips that I did. So I did want to do a yellow one. And so I started that while we opened up the video. And I will probably finish that one up in just a little bit. But I do want to show you my tips for coloring on the red door card. Because I want to tell you the red door story. So we are going to use Poppy Parade, and we are also going to use Dark Real Red. So just making sure. I have Dark Poppy Parade, Light Poppy Parade, and then I'm going to use Dark Real Red because to my eye, and now I'm not, you know, an artist by trade or anything, but what my eye likes when I see a card like this is the contrast between dark and light. So let me just show you what I mean. Do you see how in this shadow I have darkened it? And then I have also darkened around here. And to my eye, that darkness is what makes this pop, and it's what makes this feel a little bit more real. And then you contrast that against the white out here, which I am not good at white space. Every ounce of me wanted to fill that up. <laughs> but when you step back, sometimes you need to like leave your project for a few hours and come back and you look at this and you think, yes, that red door and the dark and the light in the red and then the white space, it pops. So that's what my eye likes. And so that's what I do. <laughs> and you can color however you'd like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tammy says um, that I'm my father's daughter. My father was an amazing architect and also a watercolor artist. Now, I inherited 0% of free hand ability. If you asked me to draw that with a marker, I mean, like a fine tip pen, no way, nothing, zero, you'd get nothing out of me because, oh my gosh, I cannot, I can't freehand anything, nothing. But I love to color and I love to bring in the um like the designer paper, the ribbon, the trim, the tag, the you know, all the layers. That's the part I love. So uh thank you, Tammy. In a way, you know, I I yes I am. I did inherit some of that artisticness from my dad, but not the freehand part. <laughs> so thank you, Stampin' Up, for the beautiful artwork. I just have to say that. If you're looking for details on these cards, close-up photos, the colors I used, uh, the products, shopping links. Tomorrow on uh, September 4th on my blog, pattystamps.com, is where you are going to find these cards. So just FYI, if you're looking for them. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, this is the Stampin' Up! Basic White Card Stock. I really have found that either the thick or the regular weight is perfect. Uh, I doesn't, I don't find a difference. I think it's both wonderful. And Memento Ink, when you're stamping in black and coloring with Stampin' Blends markers. Thank you. And I'm sorry I missed that comment. I, you know, I get to chatting and then I forgot, forget to look over here. Um. Yeah, Jennifer, it'd be nice to have bigger sheets of a uh, bigger size of adhesive sheets. But on the other hand, you really don't mount like a bigger thing than this. So, I mean, in a way, I guess it's OK. But yeah, it would be fun to have bigger ones. All right. So let's color the red door. And as I color, I will kind of tell you what I'm doing. And then I'm also going to um, tell you the red door story. <laughs> By the way, you'll notice I have a little grid pad under here. This is just the cute little 8x8 grid size, the 8x8 size grid pad for the Stamparatus. But I like to use it when I'm traveling and also just to make sure that I don't get ink on my background when I'm doing a video for you with without my big sheet. So um, let's see. No problem. There's a question curious so I think maybe that was the question about the basic white yeah it's the basic white 
cardstock and the memento ink pad. So I'm going to start with the door. That's that's where I started. And I am using light poppy parade and I am going to just put down some color. And usually I pull this like right close under my eyeballs because um I like to really see what I'm doing, but this is a little bit further away just because of the camera. But hopefully I won't go too far out of the lines and I will be able to do an okay job for you. <laughs> All right, so this is just one coat, very lightly. You'll notice I didn't scrub the color, just a very light coat of light poppy parade. Then I'm going to use the next darkest color, which is Dark Poppy Parade. And where I think that there would be some shadows, like under this lintel, um, to the sides, where maybe this trim is probably sticking out a little bit, I'm guessing. So there might be shadow there. And then I think there would be shadow in here, in those little sections with the extra molding and then maybe a little bit down at the bottom so that's a little bit darker and then for my very darkest I'm going to use my dark real red you know what I might have used light real red this is where it comes in handy to swatch your colors before you do it yeah I think I use dark uh, you can always add color it's really difficult to take color away once you have started a project. So here we are adding the dark real red on top of both colors of Poppy Parade. Okay, so do you see already how those lights and darks, I'll hold it up for you, those lights and darks have already given you that pop and that realistic, like, yes, there is a shadow happening there. And if you are not sure about shadows, years ago, like I don't even know how many decades ago, when I had art class in uh, college, they told us, put an arrow of where you think your sunshine is going to be. So I'll pretend like my sun... Oh, that's a horrible. See, I told you I don't have any freehand ability. My sunshine is up here and it's shining over there and that's going to remind me... Oh, but that's the wrong side. Good heavens. Please hold. Please hold. <laughs> my sunshine would be going this way because there are my shadows. And don't laugh. You are not allowed to laugh at my freehand ability. Okay? I told you already, right? No freehand ability whatsoever. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Darlene, Donna, Judy, Libby. Thanks, everybody, for joining. So we are coloring this card with the Feels Like Home celebration set. And we just did the door. And that's really all there is to that red door. Oh, I gotta tell you the red door story, huh? Don't I? Okay, we are going to color this glass. Now you could do this any color. I typically I sort of think when you see people coloring with Stampin' Blends or maybe with Copics or whatever, they generally use a light blue. And so that's what I did. That's light pool party. And then with the dark pool party, I'm just going to accentuate. A little bit of those streaks just a little bit it doesn't need much to convey that it looks like glass so there we have the door and the glass and then I wanted to show you as I was explaining earlier about how I extended this wall look to go a little further I just wanted this to feel like a little bit bigger of a scene so I don't know what should we just duplicate this one or should we do the crumb cake or should I try something even different? I'm really tempted to do gray and then leave this trim white. What do you think? I'm kind of tempted. Let me see. Let me see what smoky slate. Oh, that would be pretty. This is light smoky slate. What do you think about light smoky slate for the brick or the stone wall? and then leave that trim 
really, really white. I'm thinking that could be gorgeous. Okay, let's see. Oh, Deb says sounds good. Debbie says crumb cake. Anybody else have an opinion on that? Gina Marie says gray. Marlene says let's try gray. Tracy says yes. Hey, Tracy, I hope you're feeling better. Flo says gray. Let's do gray. Let's try it. And I'm also, because I don't want to forget, I'm going to show you my little trick with the um, color lifter. Okay. So here's what I did. And this is going to be dark, but it's the lightest, it's a light smoky slate. Maybe I should do granite. Remember I was showing you this. Maybe I should do granite. No. Okay. We're going to be brave. We're going to go with smoky slate. We're just going to do it. All right. So here's what I did. So I just went within their little sections and then I just kept going. I did a couple more beyond what they had. So you just kind of get in that rhythm and then you just do another one. So here we go. That's what I did. It's not that hard, right? And it's a little tricky, like when you're kind of going in, in and out in between. I didn't want to like color totally on top of the bike. But on the other hand, when you think about it, those bicycle spokes are like you're seeing through them. So you have to color there, right? Okay. I am really liking that gray. Can you see that? I am really liking that. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, the red door story. Thank you, Tammy. I will. Okay. Oh, sorry, Tracy. I hope you are getting better. Okay, so then we're going to do... I'm not going to do too much, like, inside of that tree, but I want enough so that I can extend that out beyond. And this is kind of feels backwards because I'm going like left-handed ish, but it's all right. It works. Okay. So I love it. I love the gray. Oh, yay, yay, yay. So glad I did it. And that again, light smoky slate. If you are wanting to duplicate this, I will add this card. I'll photograph it and add it to um, my blog for tomorrow. Now here's my tip. Let's see, let me use my pointer here. So can you see how it's darker sort of next to that trim? And then here it's a little bit faded looking. Do you see that? I don't know if it shows too much on the video, but what I did to achieve that was I took my color lifter, which, so this has no color, it's just wet. And I just sort of quickly did this, okay? just kind of lightly, kind of quickly, and I wasn't sure what it was going to do, but what it ends up doing, you have to give this just a minute, and it ends up fading and sort of blurring just a little bit, and I thought that was kind of a good way to have this wall just sort of fade. So as we color the rest of this, this is going to the color lifter is going to help kind of lift and soften that ink. And you'll see that this is going to change in a minute. Okay. Yes, Gay, I agree. The gray really brings it out, doesn't it? So let's work on the tree and the bike and the plants. And I'm going to tell you my red door story. So I have always, always, always wanted a red front door. I just think they are so stunning and striking and beautiful and amazing and I especially love it when the house has like a really dark gray almost black window shutters like to me oh my gosh that is stunning so I've always wanted a red front door but we have lived in this neighborhood for let me count 34 years I believe and it has a homeowners association. Let me just tell you what I'm doing before I go on. I used light granny apple green to lay down some color. I am dotting with dark granny apple green to give some shadow and depth and dimension to this 
I don't know, ficus tree, whatever it is, these hanging geraniums, whatever these are in the basket. And we're just adding, and then I don't know what this plant is, but we're just going to add a little bit of dark granny apple green. Let me hold it closer. Okay, so you have the light and the dark. And then just to get one more step of dark, I grabbed dark shaded spruce. And I am going to dot even darker, sort of underneath where I feel that there are some shadows happening. So not right on the top because the light is hitting the top. So now we have those three greens and then I'll just go back in with my light granny apple, dab over those so it softens them just a little because I don't want like, you know, polka dotted green plants. And then the last thing I did was I took my marker and I just popped up a little bit of extra, you know, like there was just sort of this rogue leaf that kind of popped up there. All right, so that's that's the greenery. Yes, it would, Tammy. For someone that's just moved into a new home, this would make a great card. Let's do a little bit of the branches. Dark, soft suede, I think. Ooh, that's really dark. I think I must have also used... Let's do crumb cake first, and then we'll do suede as our darker part. So I've always wanted a red front door, but in our neighborhood that has a homeowners association... Um, and I don't know if all of you know what that is, but it basically just means that there's a governing body that makes rules. And I'm sure in some places there are more rules than others. Ours basically just means that it dictates the colors that the homes can be. And we pay a dues and it covers the maintenance of painting the homes. It covers our roof. We have a community pool for our street. And so things like that, it covers. And um, it does not allow for us to have a red door. Our front door is white. So yesterday I was telling this story to my team because I do a weekly live check-in for my uh, Love to Stamp group. And one of my team members, Jason, he says, our front door is red. He says, in fact, in our neighborhood, it has to be red. And I'm like, what? It has to be red? I think I might have to move. <laughs> so I'm not sure. He lives in Massachusetts. I'm not positive that I'm ready to move to Massachusetts. But hey, you know, I just think that was so exciting that his front door has to be red. I was like, what? That is so awesome. I was so tickled. I just couldn't believe it. I was, I'm still blown away. And so then my team was giving me some suggestions. And one of the suggestions I thought was great. Uh, she said, why don't you just paint the inside of your front door red? And I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a cool idea. So I don't know, might have to do a little chatting with hubby about that. I don't know how he'd feel. I'm sure he wouldn't care. But anyway, <laughs> I thought that was such a fun idea. All right. These little pots and baskets are pale papaya, pumpkin pie, and I think, yeah, and Cajun craze. Do not be afraid to mix up colors. You do not have to just do like light and dark pumpkin pie or light and dark Cajun craze. You can just totally mix them up. I do that all the time. And then I think that there are probably red geraniums in this pot. At least in my little world, there are red geraniums in all of these. What do you think? Is that a good idea? I think it's a marvelous idea. I love that pop of red and I love how it plays off the door there. Yes, I'm loving this. Are you liking this? Uh, yeah, red doors are so pretty. Oh, Holly has a dark blue door. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Tammy, that's such a good idea. She says, tell him it'll be 49 or red. Yep, he'll go for it, huh? Louise has a red door. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love that, everybody. 
Oh, yes. Oh, how fun. That is so cool. Thank you for your fun comments. Okay, so bike. Should we do... Let's do... Uh, let's see. Here, here's where we're going to swatch because, because look, can you even tell? It's hard to tell. Two of these are Misty Moonlight and two are Night of Navy. And it's hard to tell, right? So we're going to swatch. So here's Light, Night of Navy. Ooh, and see, it's pretty dark. And here's Dark, Night of Navy. That's really, really dark. So let's do Light, Misty Moonlight. And well, that's pretty dark also. And Dark, Misty Moonlight. That's dark as well. Now, I'm saying this one right here, that was Light, Night of Navy. That's going to be my bike. Because this is going to be a really pretty red, white, and blue card. So, back to the Red Door story. I was saying that I've always also wanted a red chair in my living room. A red recliner would actually be like really, really, really what I want. And so somebody was saying the inside red front door would look amazing with a red chair. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so even though I can't have a red door outside, I may someday, who knows, get my red chair and my red recliner. I mean, my red inside of my front door and my red recliner. And how amazing would that be? I just think that would be so much fun, wouldn't it? So there's my red door story. And look, we just gave that bike a red seat. And I think that's super cute. And then we are going to do some... I think we'll do gray, dark gray granite. Is that too dark? No, nope, it's not for the tires because we have to fill in those tires. Tires might actually be different colors. I don't even know. I don't pay that much attention. I don't ride a bike. I have not ridden a bike since I was a little girl. Is that weird? I know bikes are super popular, but I walk every morning. I don't, I don't bike. I think that's cute. I'm loving it. Uh, what's up with me and red? Um, it's my favorite color. Is that is it not good? Um. Hmm. Okay. Well, I like red. Yeah, it is a powerful statement. I'm so I'm even in re wearing like a shade of red today. I just love red. All right, let's do the doormat. Oh my gosh, you know what I'm thinking? What about a yellow doormat? This would be, be like a really primary color, kind of like a straw. But what do you think? I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm using daffodil. This is going to be really cute. And then this part down here is going to be darker. And I'm just going to do a little bit of darker right where it meets the door. Yes, I'm liking that. Oh, and I think this door knocker, I don't know. We're going to say it's like brass. So I colored it yellow. I think it could really be anything, right? And then what about this sidewalk area? On this one, I did papaya and Cajun craze and pumpkin. I, I just wanted to pull in the colors of the pots. And then on this one, I just did some of the like crumb cake, I think, just sort of brown. What do you think? I don't know. Yeah, Shan, war yellow is warm and welcoming. You're right. Ah, oh, Megan says her son had a red wall in his bedroom. Gina Marie said she had a poppy parade dining room. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that would be amazing. All right, what do you think? What color should the sidewalk be? I'm not going to leave it white because then this sort of fades into nothing. I don't know. What do you think? Um, <laughs> so if I go with... 
those colors, it just really helps keep this really warm, doesn't it? I think that's kind of neat. I don't want to do blue. Don't want to do green. Let's see. Let's bring in like browns and let's look. Oh, that kind of makes it dull, don't you think? Um Oh, okay, you guys are voting for crumb cake. Well, I could, but I don't know. I I like Is that too much? Maybe it's too much color. Hmm. Gray. Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. We're going to start with light papaya. So remember I just finished telling you don't be afraid to mix your colors. So look what we're going to do. We're going to do light papaya first. And then we'll just put some brown on top. So here's light crumb cake. Yes, that will look good. I'm going to use the fine tip and And it doesn't show a lot, but what it's doing is it's kind of toning down the orange. And then what if we do light crumb cake? Yep. On top of that. And remember, I told you don't don't be afraid. It's just paper and ink and color and I mean if something really bad happened you could just start over but it's not nothing bad is happening and then we will go back with the light papaya just to blend out a little bit and look how warm totally warm and inviting didn't it just make that like yes totally warm and inviting I think that's beautiful what do you think? Let me know. Let me know if you like it. The last thing I'm going to do, I don't know if you noticed it in this, these two. Do you see this extra little pot here that is not a part of this stamp? So here is our front door stamp. This pot is an extra stamp in the set. So what I did was just a little sheet of extra pots of tulips. And it will be added to our red front door card. And I'm almost wondering, I am going to add some yellow to the pot because it's going to really pick up that. Um, if you have listened to any of my previous videos or if you follow me you know that one of the things I say is that I really really like to um, pick up the colors that I'm using in my card my project more than once I don't usually like to use a color only once. I like it to be repeated somewhere. So this using the yellow in the tulips and starting with the yellow base of the pot is allowing me to pick up that yellow mat. And you'll see when I put this on there that it's going to just kind of tie it in. It just helps tie in the colors. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking at these leaves and where the leaf bends over underneath in there is where you need darker color because that's where the shadows are. And by doing that, I'll show you, it helps it look a little more realistic than just one shade of green. So then we'll grab our snips. And we'll cut out this pot and add it. And then I will mount it after we're done here. And I will photograph it and have all three of these. We almost lost it here. 
on pattystamps.com tomorrow. That is my blog. If you don't follow me, I would love to have you join me there. Uh, I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 26 years, and I have blogged for 15. So I have a ton of crafting content for you on my blog, and I hope that you enjoy checking it out. You can always sign up for the um, the subscription, and then that way it will push out my content to you in your email every day. So that's kind of fun. If you need any of these supplies, or if you want to earn this set for free, you can always place an order with me. Pattystamps.com. There are links to online ordering. I've used two of the mini dimensionals on that pot. I think maybe the large dimensional would have worked, but just so it doesn't stick out. All right, so now <laughs> the question is, where do we put it? On this card, you can see I put it here, just, just to the edge of the tire of the bike. And on this card, I put it on the left. You could also put it sort of there, more by the front door. That would work as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There. Or I know my hand's right in the way. Let me do this so I don't put my hand in the way. So here it is on the left. Uh, there it is kind of by the front door. And I'll switch it around. Here it is over by, I like it on the left, personally. Holly says left. Tracy says left. Yeah, I trust all of you. You are right. I'm going to put it right there. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is I am going to take, I think I'm going to use my ivory marker. It's a it's probably the lightest color we have. Let me just find it. I have crafter math happening over here. Here's ivory. Okay, I'll show you here. It's, that looks dark. How weird is that? I thought it seemed lighter than that. But when I look at my swatches, it really is probably the lightest. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll go with, I'm going to I'm going to switch up here. I'm going to go with light gray granite. Let me locate it. Smoky slate. Okay, light gray granite. So see, do you see the benefit of swatching your colors and keeping them around? Uh it's really helpful. What I'm going to do is a shadow. I didn't tell you that yet, but I want some shadowing and I think I'm going to do light gray granite. I really feel like that might might be good here. So, we're just going to do a little bit and I'm not like like coloring, coloring, okay? I'm barely tapping the marker to the paper. And I'm going to darken that, darken under here. And here's a tip. I am going to even go over the dark red. Okay, and yes, this is gray granite. One thing I did in one of my tutorials, maybe a year or so ago, is I showed you how that you can even start with this color. Let me just show you quickly what I mean. You can start with wherever your shadows are going to be, you can put gray granite. Okay? Then you can go back over it with your color and it will lay down that base for having a darker area so you can do it first or you can do it last or you don't have to do it at all but uh, light gray granite is a wonderful color for that and if I, I think it's okay but if you felt that your shadow got too dark you can take that color lifter and you can just do that and what it's going to do after a minute or two, just like it did here, is it's going to lighten just, 
just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. So there is our finished red door yellow matte blue bike. <laughs> Fabulous red door card. I think it turned out so fun. And I think I missed a whole bunch of comments. Oh, light petal pink would be a good one. Thank you, Juanita. Let's see. Okay, you all were voting for left, so I'm glad I did that. I see lots of hearts. Thank you. Yes, it does feel more grounded on the left. I agree. That is a great point. Um, thank you. Diana says, love, love, love. I love that comment. Thank you so much. So sweet of you. So that is probably the total of all my tips for coloring this Feels Like Home set. And again, it is a free set. You can't buy this. So until the end of September 2021, it's free with your $50 order. If you do not have a demonstrator, I would love to have you pop over to my blog, pattystamps.com, to place your Stampin' Up! order to earn that set for free. Let me grab one thing, and then I have one more thing to show you. When I said that I had used the stitched rectangle die, this is what I mean. I don't know that all of you are familiar. So this is the die I used to cut out that red door. So you can see, it's really cool. When you lay it over there, you can get a feel for kind of framing your project. This one is one size larger, and I used that one for the blue door. And I think I'm going to do the larger one on this. I really think that, well, maybe not. Oh, I'm going to give this a moment's thought before I die cut it. Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. It felt like that was crowded for a minute, but then on the other hand, it's like cozy and it's all just sort of wrapped up in that nice little package. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, Holly likes the small one. I think I, I think I will do that. I think it'll be the small one. Probably. You'll see tomorrow on my blog. It'll be there. I want to show you one more thing. This is okay. Here's another funny story. So, um, a year and a half ago, <laughs> I reached the two million dollar personal sales milestone with Stampin' Up. So over my 26 years, it means that I had reached $2 million in sales. So that was a year and a half ago. And we were supposed to go to Stampin' Up! to celebrate because they bring in all the million-dollar achievers. We were supposed to go last May, first weekend in May, I think it was. And, of course, you all know what happened last year, you know, with COVID and pandemic and nobody got to go anywhere. So we actually are going next week to Stampin' Up! And on let me think so today's friday so wednesday night <clears throat> um ups came we heard a box land at the front door and i i asked my husband could he go get the box off the porch at my white front door mind you not my red front door and um he brought it in and he says it's stamping up i said okay i don't remember what i ordered i said just leave it on the dining room table i'll, I'll order i'll open it later and so then on thursday morning <laughs> My contact at Stampin' Up! named Carly, who has been organizing everything for my $2 million trip. She emailed me and she said, okay, just, you know, final details. I want to make sure you have my cell phone and, and you know, all that. And she says, text me when you get here. And, and she says, by the way, I hope you got a package from me this week. And I was like, oh my gosh, package. And I go running into the dining room. <laughs> And inside was this box. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, what? I was so excited. And so I opened it up, and it had little boxes inside of it. And inside the little boxes were these two luggage tags. I don't know. Can you see that? It has an embossed $2 million logo kind of embossed into the leather. So luggage tags. And then it had this beautiful portfolio, again, with that embossed um, into the leather $2 million Achiever logo. 
and it has my itinerary in here. And I'm not going to open it because there's some names and addresses and contact information and whatnot. But it's um, it's got all of my itinerary for next week of all the different departments that I get to visit. And when you are a million dollar achiever and you go to visit the home office, you can just request whatever you would like to do. And so we are going, or I, my husband and son are coming, but I'm the one that requested, <laughs> um, visiting the new catalog department. Hey, Drew, how are you? Good to see you on here. Um, the new catalog department, the concept artists, the photography department, marketing department. I, I mean, I, like every dep department I could, I'm visiting because I am just so excited to just chat with them and just, um, you know, get insider info and pick their brains. And I'm just so excited. So um, anyway, yeah, that's my uh, our trip next week. And I'm so excited to go. So does anyone have questions? I know I'm switch, switching gears a lot. Thank you. Thanks for all of your kind congratulations. Does anyone have questions about the coloring on these and what I did? And um, one thing I'm noticing here, remember when I was worried that this gray might be too dark? It's actually not. Doesn't it look good? And it really makes that white trim pop. I'm really liking it. I really do. I really like it. Thanks, everybody. Yes, we are going to have an awesome, awesome time. Oh, so that reminds me. So I won't be on here next week for my weekly live crafting because of the trip. But here on my business Facebook page where you are watching right now, I will have updates next week and I will post photos. And if I have time and if I have a good signal, I plan to do a Facebook Live or two from either the home office or our hotel or whatever, somewhere, sometime. <laughs> so I'm just going to see how that works. But I just can't promise that it would be like a certain day or a certain time. So um yeah, I just saw a question go by. Yes, memento black when you are coloring with Stampin' Blends. So I didn't want to promise a certain day and time next week, but just check my page here as often as you have time to, and you'll see all of my updates on our $2 million trip. So yeah, that's all that. Uh, anybody have any questions? I'm happy to hang out for a minute and answer questions. And if not, I'm going to clean up here and photograph my cards for tomorrow's blog post. Yay! Yes, I will be posting as many pictures as I can. Most definitely. Oh, and I also am going to stamp with Shelly and Sarah. I can't wait. Um, No, Louise, they do not let you design another stamp set. As many of you know, I did the Ribbon of Courage set as my $1 million trip in honor of my mom and her journey with cancer and um, just in honor of her life. I lost her 15 years ago. And that was my set for my $1 million achievement. But they are not having two and three and four and five, etc. million dollar achievers do another stamp set. And I'm honestly very sad because I wanted to do another set. But I understand there's lots of achievers. It's hard to, you know, fit them all into the catalogs. But um, that is what it is. And that is the rule. And so um, no, no stamp set. Thanks, Megan. I'm glad you enjoyed the coloring tips. Thank you. I'm glad you like the card. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I see some of your suggestions here. I'll write them down and share them with the product team when I meet them meet with them next week. Yeah, Donna, it's okay. Thank you. Um, I understand. There are a lot. I think there are 50-something million-dollar achievers now. And uh, let's see. I was number nine to reach a million. And I think I was number five, I think, to reach two million. And so there's a lot of achievers now. And it's hard to fit all those stamp sets in. Uh, no, Diana, this is our own trip. Kelly Atchison will be at some other time. 
Stampin' Up! kind of changed things and then COVID hit and they went back and forth on like a group trip, individual trips. And so this is an individual trip for me and my husband and my son. And it is not a group trip with other achievers. But I think in the future, yes, they are doing sort of a group trip, I, I believe. I don't know if that really got settled, to be honest. <laughs> so any other questions I can answer for you? Thanks, Eva. I see that. I will. Yes, Pam, a year and a half ago, I reached 2 million in sales. So this year, I should, should, hopefully, if things go well, hit 2.5 million. I'm at 2.4 now, and I hopefully will hit 2.5 by the end of the year. That's my goal. And then a couple more years before 3 million, obviously. It takes a while. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> So any other questions, anything else I can answer for you before I go? Thank you all so much for joining me. I know a lot of you come every week. Some of you are uh, just uh, re uh, new viewers. I appreciate you all. Thank you for joining me. And I will hopefully see you on a quick video next week. If not, in two weeks, I will see you and we will be crafting again together. So thanks again. Thank you for hanging out with me and joining me and cheering me on as we do this card. I love, you know what I love most is that yellow doormat. That was just sort of a, a, a you know, whim, like on a whim. I just like, okay, let's do it. And I love it. I really love it. I really do. Anyway, okay. Um, hey, Jenny, welcome. She says she's new today. Thank you so much for joining me. I get so excited when I see new people. Thanks, Megan. We will have a safe trip. Thank you. Yes. All right. So I will see you all soon. Have a wonderful weekend and I will chat with you later. Bye.